You're watching Smart Money. It's time now to address some of your financial queries. Let's welcome our first viewer, Manisha, who's joining us from Navi, Mumbai. Hi, Manisha. Tell us what is the concern that you have and how can we help you? Yeah, good day to both of you. Uh, I basically wanted my view on uh, the different pension plans that I'm holding. It is somewhere around uh, 28 and a half that I have put up till now. And uh, I have not yet topped up any of them. Uh, plus, I have money back policy also in which I'm putting one lakh every year. It's been five years since I'm holding, but the amount of return that I'm getting is hardly around 24% or in two of the cases and 12% in one. Uh, so, owing to this, you know, I, I am not sure whether uh, I should continue holding these pension plans or uh, to shift to uh, some other plans which would give me better retirement uh, returns, you know, by which we could, uh, I could at least fulfill the demands of my grandchildren. All right, Manisha, this is your yeah. favorite subject. She seems to be yeah. another one who's fallen prey to going and getting too many of those ulips for herself. That's right. There are certain ulips, but uh, again, this is one of my sort of favorite questions on the show, Manisha. Welcome to the show. And uh, I have to compliment you. You've, uh, you know, your husband is a marine engineer, and there are fat inflows into the money box. And you have uh, really done extremely well to construct a robust money box. So yes, you did talk about pension plans, but as I decode your uh, products, there are a lot more other assets which we will discuss in a minute, and we'll come to your specific question just after that. So what do I see in your money box? Your husband is a marine engineer, earns well. You're a homemaker who's taken it upon herself to look after the inflows and plan for a future, which you have done extremely well. You have two children, and you have already planned for their future studies and marriage you have earmarked real estate on the name of each of them already. I see a multitude of products, including insurances, mutual funds, gold, and of course, real estate. Your email, Manisha, had three questions. One was about medical insurance. The second was of your pension plans. And the third, which was, am I on track? So we'll do the first one. And also, uh, you know, through the mail uh, and through the questions that we exchanged back and forth, a certain certitude has come across. You said that your husband does not like life insurance, so he has none. And given the number of assets in your money box, at the moment you don't need life cover because your assets more than cover what your future demands are likely to be. And uh, you've also said that uh, uh, you know, your, uh, your in medical insurance is worrying you. So yes, it is a little less. You need five lakh individual policy covers for each of you, your, your husband, you, and your two kids, plus a top-up 10 lakh cover, a family floater of that. That should actually be adequate. I'm sure he's covered by his place of work right now, but he does plan to retire, so it's a good idea to build your medical covers right now, and you do have the money to pay the premiums. You should look at the Mint MediClaim ratings to choose a cover for yourself, Manisha. Now, your pension plans. Again, you know, given a portfolio like yours, you have a plethora of mutual funds and extremely well-chosen funds at that. Uh, you, a person like you does not need to be in endowment plans or pension plans, which are, promo which are basically insurance-linked plans. Let's look at endowment plans. Now, an endowment plan doesn't give much of a return or an insurance cover, right? So you've talked about 20% return and 12% returns. These are You've taken point to point. So in terms of a year-on-year -year growth, it is about 4 or 5%. Right? So 20% does sound like a lot, but when you do a CAGR, a compounded annual growth rate, it is just 4 or 5%. So you're absolutely right. It isn't much return. I would have very little hesitation in letting go of the endowment plans and use the money elsewhere, which we'll come to in a minute. About your pension plans, I see that you've, all, you've paid at least for one of them through a single premium. Now, it makes no sense to let go of that because that money has been paid up front. So you let that plan go. Any other plan, you should look at what the surrender benefits are. right? So if you, again, you are a money-savvy person. If the surrender value is very substantial, it's OK to let it go. Also, there is a period of high earning ahead of you. It's also OK to keep these couple of pension plans 
and invest the rest of the money in other products. So you also got a fair diversification in terms of your portfolio. Right? So you must understand because your portfolio is wide and it's got diversified products, I'm okay to let you continue with these two pension plans, knowing that the rest of the money will be in products which give you greater control in terms of investment and return. Now, your, your concern is about your retirement. You have to think about your retirement in terms of what you need. You need about a lakh a month. At an 8% return, you need a corpus of a crore and a half. All right? So you have to start adding up your money to see how much of that lakh will come from your pension plan. And the rest of it, you need to build a corpus. The assets are there. You need to find the products. You already are a mutual fund investor. A mixture of mutual funds, tax-free bonds, and keep a lookout for the inflation indexed bond. I'm hoping version two is better than version one. And the three products together will give you a nice corpus, a nice portfolio to target your retirement. And the last point is about your mutual funds. Now, you, you're obviously a good picker of funds, but too many funds, even if well chosen, is a problem because you let go of the advantage of diversification. You have more than 15 funds in your portfolio, Manisha let go of some of them. You do not need more than eight. After eight, the benefits of diversification go away. And also, there is a problem of management of those funds. So evaluate what products you have in one asset class. If it's equity, you do not need more than six to eight funds. Right? So you need to let go of some of them. And as far as the rest of the portfolio goes in terms of your planning, I have to compliment you. And with small changes, there is more wind in the sails for you. All right, Manisha, well done. And thank you very much for calling us. Wish you all the very best in life. Let's move on to our next viewer, Santosh, who's joining us from Pune. Santosh, tell us, how can we help you? Hi, Vivek and Monica. I'm Santosh from Pune. Uh, I watch your program regularly, and it's a very good program. Uh, I am working with MNC. And actually, I have to uh, build a strong portfolio so that I can get retired by age of 45. Also, I need uh, your advice on uh, my insurance policies where I feel that those are uh, not so great. Uh, so you can uh, help me on that. And also how I can achieve this target. Thank you. How does his money box look? little too ambitious. So Manisha was uh, very well on track. Santosh, um, what do I see in your money box? It's a real estate heavy money box with uh, three properties created and very little else in financial assets. You are 34 years old. You have a wife, two children, and dependent parents. You want to retire in the next 11 years. By the time you're 45, you want to retire. And we'll see if we can allow you to retire at all. First, the three things before we even get to your retirement, which I want you to do right away, is first build your emergency fund. You have 50,000 rupees in cash. That's not good enough. Your expenses are such that you need 6.5 lakh put away into an emergency fund. Your EMIs plus your living costs total more than a lakh a month. You need six months of living costs put away, whether it's fixed deposits or whether you understand and use short-term debt funds properly, that's up to you. But that, that's your first goal. From whatever savings you do every month, you're building that emergency fund first. Second, you have a 4 lakh medical insurance from your office. You need your individual covers. You need to build in 3 lakh each for you, your wife, your kids, a top-up of 5 lakh on that, and also a floater for your parents for 5 lakh for their medical needs. So this is essential. That's goal two. The third is the life cover. Your life cover is again from your company. Again, I don't like that. You need control over your own life cover. You need a crore and a half of a pure term policy. Buy it online for cheaper rates. So these are the first three things. And after you've done this, I don't see any savings left to target your corpus for your retirement. Let's look at what you would need. You would need that lakh a month. And at a very conservative level, we would need three crore of corpus. Let me take a crore away and say that, okay, your real estate assets will take care of that. Even if I have a, a target of two crore, you would, be need, you would need to save a lakh a month. That money is simply not there. So you need to recalibrate your future goals. 
you probably will have to work a while longer than that because retirement is not happening at, happening at 45, not with the current outflows that you have and not with the current level of income you have. So that is something which you will have to kind of deal with sometimes. All right, with that, it's time to say goodbye for now. Always remember, wealth cannot be earned, it can only be created, and we at Smart Money will continue to help you to grow and protect your money. We will be back same time next week with many more strategies for your finances. Keep watching. To get our expert opinion on your finances, you can send us your queries at smartmoney at btvin.com. You can also call us on 022-4098-7098. You can also SMS us. Just type SM, give a space, write your query and send it to 977 327 